Hello everyone, it is AD with Cosmastrology and I'm going to be doing your pick a card reading guys. So this one is going to be what are your spiritual gifts? We're going to be asking what are your spiritual gifts? How would they benefit you? How would they benefit others? And of the lovely suggestion from my sisters, how to strengthen your gifts? What tools can you use in order to get more in tune with your gifts? And then of course we're going to end on a couple oracle cards. So this is pile one, pile two, pile three. Please take a second to meditate. See what pile, you know, speaks to your soul. Um, so hit pause, do that. But I do want to say thank you so much for your support, guys. Thank you. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Drop a comment below. I live for the comment section. So please drop a comment below. And I'll meet you over at your piles. Let's hop straight into it. <clears throat> Alrighty. Hello, Pile One. It is AD with Cosmastrology, and I'm going to be doing your pick a card. So this is if you picked the Ace of Wands here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tuck that away. So this pick a card reading is for what are your spiritual gifts? I want to say thank you so much for participating in those polls. There's going to be a new one unlocked next week, so be ready to vote. But let's hop straight into this reading. It's going to be, again, what are your spiritual gifts? How would they benefit you? How would they benefit others? And how to strengthen your gifts? So let's hop straight into it, guys. <laughs> I say that so much, but I just get so excited. So let's go ahead and see. How can you, what are your actual spiritual gifts? So I'm using this deck because it does have astrology tied into the actual deck. So I am going to point out the signs. Um... Not using the traditional card because I just want to try to get a full, you know, as, as full of a picture as I possibly could. So let's see. What are pile one spiritual gifts? What are the spiritual gifts for pile one? It's interesting. So I will say that the, these cards are taking a little bit of time. If you know, if you if you watch the channel, you know these cards be flying. So I will. I'm getting this energy of like your gifts are very deep and and hard to not necessarily hard to uncover. Yeah, I guess hard to hard to uncover is exactly what I meant. Um, here we go. <laughs> Not the five of wands and the seven of swords. So for all my tarot people out there, you know what it is. Yeah, I was like, I feel like not only um, are your gifts very secretive with the seven of swords here, you also may have fought them a lot in the past. So I'm curious to see. But look at this double energy. I'm, I am seeing Gemini. Here we have Saturn and Leo here. And here we have represented moon and Aquarius. So interesting to have those opposing energies there, right? And so there's a conflict. Ooh, who I can't wait to get into your actual gifts, but I just really see that there's a conflict of not wanting to share them because you don't want to be weird. I feel like a lot of you know that you're super spiritual people and you probably have an idea of what your gifts are, but I feel like they're very weird, super eighth house, super occult. So maybe you have eighth house placements, uh, fire in your eighth house of some sort, but let's keep, let's keep going. Which would prob which would give you an earth rising, yeah. And please remember, I do subscribe to Vedic astrology, so my placements might be a little different than yours. We got the three of cups here. Cancer represented. The King of Swords. So what are Pile One's spiritual gifts? Um, I do feel like it definitely has to deal with uh, communication. And then with that sun in Scorpio, I am seeing communication. Maybe with dead people. Oh, spooky. <laughs> Maybe with dead people or just with people who are going through deep transformations in their life. Um, you're able to uncover dark secrets. So it's interesting. Again, we mentioned the eighth house. And here we have this um, seventh house. But I mean, excuse me, we have the Scorpio energy here. So I'm getting this energy of there's a really unorthodox way that you're able to communicate. Um, yeah, let's keep going. The eight of Pentacles, Virgo, sun and Virgo represented here. And Virgo is ruled by Mercury, which again symbolizes communication. So let's keep pulling. The Knight of Wands, <laughs> the Knight of Communication, right over the Ace of Wands. So yeah, I am picturing very fiery, um, this is super specific, Pile One, but I get that you're able to calm um, very angry and hostile energies. You have a very calming effect. You're able to take super passionate situations, transform them, and bring harmony. 
So again, right, you could have Libra or strong Libra moon, Libra placements, Libra rising, um, but you're able to bring balance in really unstable situations. I feel like one of your spiritual gifts is you're able to help people transition from this life into the next. The three of pentacles, so interesting there. And we have Mars and Virgo represented. So something also about health. So some of you guys, your spiritual gifts could be in nursing or taking care of others with the Virgo energy being represented, helping people. Wow, I know that this sounds crazy, but I do feel like you can <laughs> help people die. And what does that mean? Help people transition help people see the other side of things it doesn't necessarily have to be death but i imagine that some of you could work in the health field health helpers um profession um you could work with extremely terminal patients and help them transition but for others of you it can be that spiritual transition right you can help people um provide support for a spiritual death but it's very private. I feel like your 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 gift is very private. In fact, your guides, like I said, they didn't even want to tell me. They're like, it's none of your business. <laughs> it's none of your business what we do. The fortitude. So again, strong Leo energy represented here. Um, so let's so let's so let me tune into this for a second. Ooh. Just heard that really high screech. But let me tune into this for a second. So I am getting that A. You are very powerful with this Leo Scorpio combo that I'm getting right in the middle. Um, you're very powerful. You probably come from people who have who have royal talents um, and have a long lineage of voodoo. I'm hearing specifically witchcraft. Um, you come from really, I'm, I'm excited to see, but I'm getting high priestess energy, even though it's not here, but with the seven of swords, there is something that's very hidden. You are able to access quite easily information that other people don't, are not privy to. So you're extremely powerful and knowledgeable of uh, pile number one. Let's look, uh, let's look deeper into it. So again, the five of wands to the three of cups, your strength and your presence is able to bring balance to specific situations. I think you, pile one, are not the one to play with you might be quiet you might have been quiet in the past but your energy just radiates do not mess with me so one of your spiritual gifts is you are genuinely a protector i feel like in past lives you've definitely been a champion for people who are not able to defend themselves or in a past life you were unable to defend yourself so you come into this lifetime strong as a all get out to be like, no, you are not going to mess with people. So it's so funny that you picked the Ace of Wands. So strong fire energy. Um, and maybe again, people don't know this about you with the Seven of Swords and the Five of Wands because I feel like you fight it yourself. Um, another one of your spiritual gifts, and I know that this sounds crazy and it sounds off, but your attention to detail. Not I, okay, was raised by a Western Virgo. <laughs> So I had to cultivate my sense of detail to an extent, but I am not a detail-oriented person at all. And when I say being the detail oriented person is a spiritual gift, but it's also a thankless one and not a lot of people get shine. But as a person, Western Pisces, again, I am so head in the clouds. I attract Virgo energies like nobody's business because I need it to ground me. So because I, so I'm giving you that spiel to be like, listen, that is a spiritual gift. The fact that you are able to just tune into details. I feel like you have this uncanny ability to detect BS. Your BS detector, pile one, is a spiritual gift okay and then that, that could be in a work environment that can be in a social environment you were just able to see very deeply into what people are saying it's almost as if you read energies you don't need words you know and some of you some of you i'm hearing very specifically could have had issues hearing or you might have been deaf in a past life and so you've had to learn how to read a room without your senses and it could have been blind so some of you guys have had impair impairments in past lives if, if they haven't incarnated but i I feel like your soul just has an, an uncanny ability to close their eyes and sense what's going on. They don't need anything because they were blind, they were deaf. So you had to learn how to read people for past what they're presenting to you, for past for for past words. You know, you're not moved by words, and that is a gift. You know, you're not you are not going to be on American Greed because you got scammed out of. <laughs> You know, your life's pension. You, pile one, are not going to be there. You're going to be like, hold on, let me see that contract. Let me go analyze that contract. Let me look over that for a second. Oh, yeah, uh-huh, no, this is some BS. And I feel like because of that, 
you again champion for other people so that's really awesome but just to go back to how detail oriented you are and how much of that is a is truly a gift you know don't let people take you for granted. I feel like you feel that way. It gets taken for granted uh, because people don't appreciate the person who, you know, makes everything run. They're just concerned with um, how it turned out. They don't care about the ins and outs. And so sometimes you can feel like you've been lost, but at the same time, you have such a presence. So people might not outwardly thank you, Pile One, but they definitely see you shine. Um, I am hearing, you know, it's so funny in film, um, <laughs> there's like, you know, you can be a director, you can be an actor, you can be a screenwriter, you know, there's so many options, but you can also be a sound person. And when I was in school, everybody was just like, learn to do sound. If you do sound, you won't ever, you know, you'll never want for a job. <laughs> you will always be able to work because nobody does sound, but everybody needs sound. <laughs> and it's a thankless job because if the sound is perfect, nobody says anything. But if the sound and you hear the popping and it's going in and out and fading, then you're like, oh man, this sound is terrible. So I feel like you, Pa One, are like the sound people. You have to be there in order to function because without sound, there is nothing. That's why I said, I feel like some of you have had hearing issues in the past or been deaf, deaf in a past life but it's just like you bring the sound without the sound the story can't be told <laughs> and if it's done poorly everybody will know but because you're so good at executing it um people need you people need you around so don't for a second think that your talents are not seen but your spiritual gift is really you can hear maybe that's why again just to tie into why you can speak to dead people <laughs> or speak to um different incarnations of different energies because I just get that you have a very tight, close relationship to sound. Some of you guys could deeply be into music of some sort, but you knew how to talk to things that you didn't have to see. You didn't have to see it to talk to it, if that makes sense. So yeah, that being said, to kind of tune back into this Aquarius energy, I do feel like there's something super unorthodox. You're very much a humanitarian. I do think that you want the best for most people and yet, and it upsets you when people get trapped into bs it, it really on a soul level drives you nuts <laughs> perhaps that's why um but but at the same time you're pretty independent and so you're like i can't fight every battle with the five of wands here so i just imagine that there's a duality between your gifts because it's different so for everybody who watches this pile i do think that you can hear talk and do different things and uh, you know for the most part you're pretty detail oriented or you have a, a knack for picking out you know weeds and stuff but However you end up channeling this energy is going to be so different. So I'm curious to see how can you strengthen it. But I do imagine that it's going to be quite a bit because there's a lot. <laughs> but I do feel your biggest spiritual gift right now is that you are able to see through BS. Okay, or not your biggest, but a few. You're able to see through BS. You are very detail oriented and can notice things that other people don't. You're you're a master at fine print, a master of communication. That is your spiritual gift. And your probably more spooky one is that you are truly able to channel and bridge gaps between people in the 5D sense, but you're also able to bridge gaps for people who have passed on to people who are still in the the 3D world. So you are a medium. <laughs> wow. Quite literally, you are a medium between um, the 5D and the 3D world. So let's keep going. All right. How would this gift benefit you? Or how do these gifts benefit you? I'm um, sorry, guys. I just want to shuffle. I got so excited to do this reading. I didn't shuffle the cards as good as I wanted to. Don't tell nobody. But um, sorry, guys. So give me a second. Um. Yeah, but your soul is very strong. I'm hearing because I just can't help but be drawn to all this fire and moving towards it. And of course, it took so long to <laughs> it took so long for that energy to come out. And I feel like you're probably really shy, especially if this Virgo energy, it's like you don't really want to <laughs> make a big stink. Like you don't want to stand out because of this. But I really feel that you'll be able to do some you're very a you're protected, you know, um, so it might be scary because you're like, I don't want to go crazy. I don't want to. And when I say go crazy, I'm sorry, but I can't help but notice these two lions. So sometimes it really is unsettling. You could go through the crazy mood swings and it's just because you're here and you're there you're in two places at once uh but i think if you stop fighting that energy and tune into it you will re recognize that you not only do you have friends protecting you on this side and that side but you are really hold the key um of that passageway for other people and it can really help people heal 
especially with that Virgo energy. Oh yeah, and I also mentioned you could be actually in the healing arts, like a nurse and all that other stuff too. All right, so how could they benefit you? <laughs> Not the King of Pentacles popping out. So of course, I do think that you could be very successful. Um, and it'd be mutually beneficial. You know, as a person who does spiritual work, it's hard for me to charge. Hence why I'm so donation-based at the same time. But because I am donation-based, let me tell you, I'm, I'm so abundant because of the love that you guys share. You know, mind you, I am going to bring out the Cash App card, so be prepared. But, you know, I do feel really abundant in what I do when I don't have to charge an arm, a, arm and a leg, you know, and I get to live life and do beautiful things for myself from time to time. Now, granted, I'm not, <laughs> granted, it's, it, it, you know, I'm not. Not trying to over glamorize it but i am saying that you don't have to be in it for the money and still make money is what i mean <laughs> the page of swords okay how will they benefit you woo the devil card so interesting so double capricorn energy coming out too um so again you could make it very far and be super ambitious the three of swords i'm at the three of wands the six of swords how will these gifts benefit you The Four of Cups. Huh, I feel like I need another one. The Chariot <laughs> to the Four of Pentacles. Um, so I'm seeing here that how does it benefit you? Death. Oh my goodness. I was about to say this is such a transformative experience. Once you. All right. So this is a double edged sword. So it can eventually benefit you directly. Uh, financially. King of Pentacles. Um. And it'll help you travel. Excuse me. I was like, what's the next thing? You can travel with this. If you, you can take the show on the road. <laughs> this is literally what I heard. You can take the show on the road. Um, but for others of you, how it'll help you to just embrace this part of yourself instead of fighting it and channeling that energy. Because I do imagine that you could break out of shackles with the information that you gain. Um, spirit wants you to break out of the shackles. You're not different. This is a gift. These are gifts. The fact that you hear certain things or you have a different interpretation and understanding of life, those are what separate you from this transformative, um, from this very, excuse me, from this binding experience that is the human one you're able to see past it <laughs> and i do think that you're able to help people really overcome their death and loss and i know that this isn't that part of the reading but i feel like you yourself will have a better understanding of death and loss but you can truly help people hear from their loved ones and and again bridge that gap wow look at this again bridging that gap between those two worlds um, that chariot to the four of pentacles. But I do feel like it'll benefit you because once you embrace this and start working at, it, working at it, whatever you feel it like is limiting you, pile one, you will be able to travel and do. I do think that spirit wants you to be abundant um, in using this gift and helping other people because people need it right now. Pile one, you are certainly a medium of some sort. You are able to astro project. You are able to see different lifetimes. You just, um, what is it? When you can access a Akashic records i feel like you definitely can do that um you have access to <laughs> i just heard you have a lot you've made a lot of friends in death bear with me pal one i don't think i'm scaring you because i think that y'all get this um i hope that this is more you know inspiring than anything else and, and helps you see that it's really not the devil um but you've just made a lot of friends in death and because of that they're very gossipy with the page of swords here so you can ask about somebody I'm like oh i know him like oh this was their past life blah, blah 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 like you have a lot of friends on this side and both and some of you have perhaps felt isolated with the devil card the four cups here the four pinnacles because most of your friends are on the other side so um of course i do feel like in past you might have battled with mental illness and all the other stuff mental illness i use lo loosely because people don't understand those spiritual phenomenons and what we're dealing with in science tries to label it and categorize it but really it's just experiences so instead of shunning them and feeling like you're quote unquote crazy embrace them learn how to work with them and then you can do magnificent work but this gift will benefit you because it'll help you move forward but it will also take you out of your comfort zone and it'll help you bring travel and stuff in your life and with the king of pinnacles you will be a abundant um let me see if there's any more information that spirit would like um the three of swords the nine of wands um 
Okay, that's just the hair font. Okay, so very specifically, I'm hearing that some of you, and again, this might not be from this lifetime, right? Because we're looking at your spiritual gifts, and so I wasn't expecting this. I'm never expecting, y'all, I'm never expecting these readings to go the way that they do, but my guides are always like, let's take it a step further. <laughs> Um, so either in this life or next, I just feel like in the past, you've probably been persecuted for this gift. And that's why it's so heavy. Some of you guys may come from extremely religious um, backgrounds and all this other stuff. And so you're not supposed to do tarot. Perhaps you'd be a hell of a tarot reader. You know what I'm saying? Or perhaps you'd be a hell of a astrologist or something. But I feel like you've been conditioned to believe that those gifts are terrible. You know, I'm, I, I kind of see right here, like the witch burning, the witch hunts. And it's because people have turned on you in the past. Um, and I think that you have that fear or you're scared or as a young kid or, or whatever, you, this this gift was just shut down very early. It was shut down extremely early in multiple lifetimes. So this is something that you truly have to overcome because it is such a special gift. It is so special and unique um, because you can truly hear other people's experiences. You know, what is it? The ghost whisperer? <laughs> yeah, like... You can truly hear that. And I feel like as a child, again, in this lifetime or past lifetimes, people made you feel weird about it or were just like, oh, who are you talking to? Like, you can't talk to that person and da 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 uh, But you definitely have energies. I'm picturing a lot of Gemini, especially with this, these two Leos here. You might be able to conduct whole conversations with yourself, but it's because you're channeling other energy. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, spirit is encouraging you to, yes, you have been held back by societies and traditions and religions in the past, but it's time for you to embrace that. So it will really benefit you to move past this energy. Yeah, look at that communication in unknown places. The two of cups. I feel like you'll really find your place as the medium. Um... <laughs> I do. That's so specific and wild, but I feel like you'll really feel you're most comfortable when you're able to freely transport between these two worlds. Um, yeah. So, Paul One, you certainly have to let me know if this resonates. I'm absolutely fascinated. Um, so let's move on to how will they benefit others? I think we already, I think we are going to, excuse me. <laughs> I think... Ooh, wrong deck. Not me picking up the wrong deck. I'm sorry, I like write the questions and write what deck I want to use so I can keep up with myself. Um, but how will they benefit others? And like I said, I feel like we have a good idea. But I, we, of course, we're going to continue to pull cards. So how will your spiritual gifts benefit others? And this is the sun and moon tarot, in case you guys are interested. Um, I just got this deck today for this reading. <laughs> I want to get some new decks, guys. Um, wow, the chariot. So it's interesting because the chariot has come up in these two... Um, both. So like I said, I feel like you will help people that you travel hold on let me get my words together <laughs> as you travel you will help people you want to travel people in other places need help so you will benefit others kind of on the run oh the king of swords wow communication king of swords came out twice right didn't we have the queen king of swords before so how will you benefit others? Oh, and I can't help but notice these little black birds, these ravens, and and they communicate. You know, birds are messengers. Um, and I'm also seeing the raven. <laughs> so you definitely know how to communicate. I'm just reaffirming, guys, that you got your gifts would be able to help people communicate with with loved ones and strength. Oh my gosh, you'll be able to help people. Um, What's the word? I think that you'll be able to not in a, this is in a, um, a very real and profound way. Um, and it's not shallow at all, but you will be able to help people find their inner strength because you're going to tell them things that maybe people could not tell them while they were alive. You're not BS, BS, BSing people, excuse me. But I do think that you will be able to clarify things that bother people. So things that people couldn't say in the past life or when they were here in the 3, 3D life, you will be able to tell them. So let's say that somebody, I am getting with the cherry, a lot of moon energy and I picked that up specifically mothers, mothers who have left early, you will be able to channel that maternal energy very easily and tell people who have lost their mothers at a, a, at a young age or something. Um, 
what they think. And, and, and again, just bridging that gap, making people feel less alone. Note that lone wolf there. And knowing that when they are alone, they are surrounded by love, that butterfly, and they're able to transform their loneliness into something else. Uh, but I feel like you really have a um, knack for, yeah, changing lonely people's lives. You, it, When people encounter you, it'll be a life-changing experience. It'll help them move forward. You will be able to unstuck people. Um, and if it's not, I do feel, like I said, I'm picking up the spiritual gift of just being able to hear others. But... I, I do get this energy that if you're more in the healing term or you're helping people out of addictions, I feel like you could genuinely help people out of addictions, but there will be something super metaphysical about it. Even if you were somebody who was a therapist, your therapy would be like, I give therapy, but I give therapy with a twist of channeling other people's energies and other people's experiences. Like even if you did something that was quote unquote common, I feel like it would be with a twist of some sort. But regardless, you are able to make people unstuck by information that they wouldn't have access to unless you told them. <laughs> you're like the only person. Um you're very popular. Wow, the devil. Didn't I mention addiction and stuff? You're just going to release people from fears. Oh, the three of swords, sorrows coming up over the three of swords. Wow, this is such a powerful and life-changing gift, pile one. I feel like I keep wanting to say pile three. So maybe there'll be some information in pile three for you too. Of course, I haven't done pile three yet, but I just really get, you definitely change people's lives. The four of pentacles. Another energy of being, you know, unstuck. Yeah, the Two of Wands, the King of Cups, excuse me, the Seven of Cups and the Magician. Yeah, you will be able to make clear things that were unclear. Like the cool thing about this card, I noticed it earlier. Normally the Seven of Cups is up in the air, but it's funny because it's in the sea. So there's things that are beneath the surface that with the Magician, you will be able to uncover and bring back to life things that have been beneath the surface. And it'll create these really life-changing profound experiences for people um and build the strength for if they've lost loved ones i know i specifically mentioned mothers but i am seeing here with the king of cups of it's all energies but particularly with parental work i don't know why i'm getting that you're able to heal childhood traumas um particularly with people who have the child the trauma of abandonment <laughs> because their family has died in some way um so we have the four of pentacles, the two of wands. So let me move these for a second so I can look through this. So again, yeah, you're just able to communicate things that they wouldn't necessarily see. Um, you're able to give people a clear perspective because you are in another, you're honestly able to gather information from another realm. Um, the chariot to the strength card, the four of pentacles and the king of cups. I do feel like you're able to provide a safe space for people to explore their emotions as they start moving forward forward again i'm picking up the king cups here scorpionic energies cancer so there's a lot of water um it's water and sword energy that's why i was like you're able to articulate other people's emotions you're able to articulate other people's feelings that wouldn't have necessarily been clear you're able to decipher that's a spiritual gift you're truly able to decipher downloads in a really profound and spectacular way that truly helps people break away from this devil um clears their minds and lets them know oh the two of wands this is beautiful you let people know that they have options in life oh my gosh i almost want to cry i just feel like when you communicate with people and when you offer this gift, and again, I'm talking to you like you're doing the job, okay? So I, I am saying that. But when you talk to people, you let people know that, hey, you're not stuck. Hey, whatever it was that you thought that was going to keep you down and this devil and that devil in your ear, you actually have support from the other side. You actually have choices. You can continue down this path if you'd like. I can't force you to drink, but I can give you information that might change you, your predicament is really what I'm getting, okay? Um, that's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. And then again, the seven of cups to the magician, just being able to manifest and bring things in and bring this information to people so they can make choices for themselves. The underlying energy that we had is the nine of cups. It makes people so happy and wish fulfillment. Um, that's absolutely gorgeous. And then let me see if there's any more that spirit wants you to know. How will you benefit other people with your spiritual gifts? 
And even if you work in like the nursing or healthcare options, you'll be like, listen, there's options. You know, you could do chemo or you can do this. And you'll be, because you'll get more information. I just feel like you are very much um, a, a witch. <laughs> you are definitely, you are the town witch, I promise. I'm sorry that they turned on you when the witch hunts happened and all the other stuff as people do. And again, that fire, fire. So I am saying that you've been persecuted in the past, but I do think that it's time for you to use your gifts. And I can't promise, and I'm, and I'm being honest, I'm speaking from my heart. I can't promise that they won't persecute you again. But if you're burning on the stake, bitch, I'm burning there right next to you, period. Because we're they're going to have to take us all out if that happens. <laughs> all right. And then we got the two of swords here, peace. So again, just that mending of the two minds being able to communicate. And normally this is depicted as, you know, her she's blindfolded, but this lady has no eyes. So no need to blindfold. But I just feel like when you sit in your own energy and you hear the spirits that are traveling around you and you're able to tune into yourself... That is when you're your clearest and you can get phenomenal information. Phenomenal information from the other side is really what I'm hearing, pal one. Woo, crazy. All right, so our last question is going to be how to strengthen your gifts. So we're going to look in how to strengthen your gifts. And this is the Universal um, Tarot of Marseille, of Marseille, I believe that's how you say it. And I actually really like this deck. It's, 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 I think it's like, it might have been before the Rider Waite, but, but I enjoy the colors. <laughs> it's very colorful. Oh, wow. So we got the Ten of Cups. How do we strengthen? How can you strengthen your, oh man, the Queen of Cups. How can you strengthen your gifts? The Knave of Wands. I think first you actually need to explore your own possession of empathy. I think that, and what do I mean by that? I think that you need to sit with your gifts and genuinely try. I can't help but be drawn to this person who is sitting there, who is clearly like, I'm clear as a bird. I'm waiting to receive that information. I do think that you should try it. <laughs> I really think when you feel good about yourself and you're feeling confident with that 10 of cups, um, you should definitely try to see and be like, all right, let me see if I just tune everything out and sit. Um, will I be able to hear? Because I just feel like, and, and water, water with the cup energy <laughs> the high priestess how to strengthen your gifts um water piscean energy represented here so maybe you need water to channel um uh, maybe you can look into water and see messages um it could be in a in a bath or of some sort the 6 of wands So there absolutely is victory in this. And you will receive attention for it. I know that's crazy, but I think think that you have the potential to see to receive um attention for it. Because like I said, even though this is a pick a card reading, right? You will still see um you're still unique with that Aquarius. This is however you channel will be unique to you. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. And then here we have the moon. I live my life by the moon, by the moon. And I do think that you should live your life by the moon. <laughs> um, I do feel like on this next, I'm getting, I, I'm, I'm hearing new moon. Um, ask your spiritual guides for help in developing this. But as far as your strength goes with the Ten of Cups, the Queen of Cups, and even the High Priestess, you first have to open yourself up to this experience with the Knave of Wands. You have to open yourself up to the light again. You have to kind of go into that darkness. Wow. That's what I'm fear. That fear that you have to not go into the darkness, you really have to go towards it with a with a clarity because you will find that you will be welcomed with open arms over there. They've been waiting for you to tune into that energy. I think that you will feel so much joy um, when you finally see what your goal is because even with the moon here and just this strong Cancerian energy, you're able to feel so deeply. Like I said, in a past life, I really feel like Helen Keller, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all did not have eyes <laughs> or like you were blind and you were deaf and so you just had to experience the world and life 
through your senses. I really feel like that's all you've had. So I do think that's what I'm getting. In order to strengthen yourself, you have to um, take out all of the 5D senses that comes through meditation. Uh, for some of you, you know, those water chambers, I don't know how, you know, I'm not assuming that everybody got a whole bunch of money like that, but those sleep, like not sleep deprivation, but those sense deprivation chambers and all the other stuff with that water, um, I am hearing in a safe way, you could submerge yourself into water um, and get insights there too. But I feel like you have to, get, you cannot be, you have to completely deprive yourself of your senses in order to get in tune with these gifts so you can hear the other side. Um, how can pile three, um, excuse me, pile two, one, oh my gosh. <laughs> how can pile one strengthen? Yeah, the justice card to the fool. So again, justice just is giving me balance. Once you finally balance out your emotions, that's when you will have access to that portal and you will be able to decide to walk through it. Yes, there will be an opportunity. You have been presented this opportunity to walk through this portal many times before but due to fear um you do not go through that portal but i do think that if you again deprive yourself of senses <laughs> that sounds so weird by one but deprive yourself of senses sit in your own energy and really let loose you can either have water music playing in the background or be by a body of water of some sort um and really just let that spirit enter i do think that you will be able to communicate you know, I'm, I let the spirit enter. I'm wondering, does like the body, is the body, are you a medium in the sense where, I think it'll be different from all of you, but I, some people, you know how they like embody the spirit? I wonder if you're like that. The six of pentacles. Okay, that's interesting. So it'll be half and half. It'll be half and half. Some of you guys, oh, the king of swords. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. And then what's the other half? <laughs> Let's see. The Ace of Wands. <laughs> wow. Some of you will be able to just communicate with the spirits. Others of you will actually, the spirit will embody you and then speak through you. So be aware of that. I Again, I feel like you probably had experiences with either or before, but some of you can actually be quote unquote possessed. Um, and that's probably why, yeah, you're going to want to be absolutely careful. Make sure that you're welcoming the right spirits. If we're going to look into crystals and stuff to see what can also help strengthen it. But I do feel like some of you physically embody it and others of you are just able to communicate. And some of you, again, with the Six of Pentacles can do both. It just depends on what is what the situation is calling for. But in order to strengthen this gift, you actually have to empty out every sense of being of this human flesh and the human body. That's the only way that you'll be able to open yourself up and purge yourself enough to let spirits either communicate with you or actually embody you. So those are your spiritual gifts. Oh my gosh, I got so crazy heavy. 40 minutes. Wow. <laughs> That's wild. All right, guys, but this is what I got for the first part. Of course, I am going to pull a couple Oracle cards for you, but I just want to say thank you so much. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Drop me a comment. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Instagram. And of course, I'm bringing out the Cash App card, guys, if you like this reading um, and you have it on your heart under no pressure are you obligated to, but this is for you to donate. So we have the dollar sign, capital A, capital B, lowercase EV224 on Cash App. If you like PayPal, that is in the description description box. I appreciate you guys so much. A dollar, five dollars, even prayers. And if you've already given either energetically or physically, thank you from the bottom of my heart. It, it really helps because I don't monetize these videos or I haven't been monetizing these videos because YouTube is on that, you know, craziness. So yeah, so I really appreciate those. Um, any of your help helps. All right. So thank you. All right. So now let's go ahead and move into your animal card so we're seeing if we have any animal spirits that come out for you of course um and then like i said we're going to pull some crystal cards Oof. <laughs> cat independent and aren't cats cats are like the protectors of um you know the egyptians believe that they guarded the doors um they guarded doors and kept spirits away. And, you know, and cats be on their own world. I'm telling you, cats be chasing after crap that you do not see. Like, you're like, what, what, what? <laughs> 
what and then we have this beautiful dear energy here so that love like i said you were just so full of love and that's the other thing too with the ten of cups when you are at your happiest and your fullest and your brightest and you've and you've been able to accept yourself and your colorful personality right that is when you will be able to continue to share love. And I think that you'll be called to do that later. Oh, wow. Snow leopard, self-reliance, another cat. And then we even have coyote, the revealer of truth. So, and look at them ears. Look at all these big ears that these animal has. You're just able to hear certain things um, and, and channel them. Um, I'm going to give you a second, of course, if you want to read these. Hopefully you can zoom in. Um, here, I'll hold them up because I'm going to get you out of here. So hit pause and then read it. If that interests you. Because I cannot believe we're 40 minutes in. But I do think that, you know, you have a high calling. And that's beautiful. Okay. So you can read those and look at those. And then we're going to pull some crystal cards and see what crystals you can work with. Um, I'm not going to read from the book. Because, like I said, we're at 40 minutes. And you're the first pile. So, I hope I didn't bore you. I try to answer. I feel like I answered a lot of questions. I hope I wasn't rambling too much. Um, who knows? Oh, wow. Divine Perfection. You got Archangel, Malzadek, and Selenite. Okay. And I can't help. And that beautiful pink energy. I love it. Um, there's just something super feminine about what you do. Again, with the high priestess, it's very feminine work. Um, whether you're a masculine or a feminine, you're just able to, again, tune into that, that underworld. You just have access to so much knowledge. Um, then we have Archangel Raphael and Malachite, grace for the grand gesture. And that green. So you can look up that crystal and then one last crystal that you could use. And so look up these crystals, read about them, and then I would incorporate them into your routines, into your meditation routines. All right, let's get one more. And, and you can also look up the archangels and stuff too because archangels are the bee's knees. One more. Is there any more, Spirit? Maybe there's not any more. Oh, just kidding. Oh, wow. Ascendant Master Mary Magdalene and Aqua... Aura Quartz, Divine Alchemy. Wow, Mary Magdalene, guys. That's what I'm saying. And what did she do? She was the one who realized Jesus had, you know, gone on. She was the one who told everybody like, y'all, my dude, Jesus ain't there no more. <laughs> she was the one who really was like there. So I do think that like, yeah, um, you have that gift. And she was there to help him through that transition of death and rebirth. So that's beautiful. And then again, we have that um, divine alchemy represented there. So I hope that that resonated, Paul One. Please let me know. Um, and I will see y'all. You know, I'll see you. Thank you so much for continuing to support this freaking channel. I love you so, so, so much. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and follow me on everything else. Oh, yeah. And if you'd like a, a personal reading, a personal reading. Man, I literally forgot what pile I was picking up. <laughs> but if you'd like a personal reading, then you can certainly shoot me an email. Um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right, cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up. Oof, I definitely need a sip of my coffee, darling. Because this went a lot longer than I thought. Not mad, though. Alrighty, almost done, period. Okay, and let me take a sip of my freaking coffee. All right, we're in this thing. 43 minutes, period. <laughs> okay. So, hello, this is AD with Cosmastrology, and I'm going to be doing your pick a card reading. So this is if you pick Pile number two, the Ace of Swords. This pick a card is going to be about what are your spiritual gifts, all right? So the first question, what are your spiritual gifts? Second, how would they benefit you? How would they benefit others? And then we have how to strengthen your gifts and advice. And then, of course, we're going to end on some animal cards and crystal cards, some oracle cards, excuse me. So just to give you a little bit of further insight, but yeah, the first reading ran 40 minutes and I was not, a, your bitch was not expecting that, but I hope that it helps and that it's thorough. So let's go ahead and hop straight into it. Um, of course, I'm going to stick this down there. 
Um, but yeah, forgive the, the forgive the table shake. <laughs> I'm using like a lot of different decks, but the same decks from the other reading. So we'll get a really good picture into it. So let's see if you pick pile number two, what are your spiritual gifts? And again, this deck does incorporate astrology. Please remember I subscribe to Vedic, but I'm going to be reading the astrology from these cards too. So you'll, you'll be getting that info. You'll be getting that info too. Alrighty. So we'll take these first three. Wow, we got the four of wands. So what is pile two spiritual gifts? The four of wands. Um, and here we have represented Venus and Aries. <laughs> so definitely a go-getter. <laughs> More Aries, fire, energy, the three of swords, the sun and Aries. We got the seven of swords. So it's interesting because the seven of swords came out in the other pile and it was like a kind of secret gift. So I'm wondering how the seven of swords is going to, to play a role in this reading. The seven of cups. So two sevens, Venus and Scorpio. What is Paul ones? The hangman and the six of swords. What are Paul twos? Excuse me if I said Paul one, this is Paul two. What's Paul two spiritual gift? Wow, the sun. Okay, so I'm I'm getting that you're able to really you have a you have a beautiful energy and I think that you have a, a nice home. Wow, that's so funny. We got the ten of swords and the hierophant. So let me straighten these out a little bit. Um. So I do imagine that you are able to give people a good resting place or like a hideout. So I'm thinking that, I know it sounds crazy, but like if you were alive during, you know, when slaves were trying to break loose and you would have definitely been one of those people along the Underground Railroad who helped store people. And I feel like you help store people in your house. So maybe you have a very open home with the with the Hierophant Taurus energy. You're really good at hosting and making other people feel good. Even if you feel bad about yourself, which is super interesting. But with the Four of Wands, Lord of Perfected Work, that does symbolize and speak to... Um, homes and and homecomings and welcoming so i just feel like you're a person pile number two who tries to keep your arms as open as you possibly can um this is a type of energy that i feel like would foster children adopt um or even be really good to stepchildren and other people you're very welcoming with your energy and that is a spiritual gift some people genuinely are not and i think that that surprises you because you're so giving um, and I do want to say you're very Mars ruled. So it's interesting because I get like this juxtaposition between Mars and um, Venus <laughs> and Venus here uh, where you love very aggressively. <laughs> that is one of your spiritual gifts is how aggressive you are. Uh, we got Sun and Gemini here, Taurus represented, Leo represented, um, Aquarius, double Aquarius energy also. So you might have some Aquarius in your chart and then Pisces. So um, just for a, a little bit of that um, astrology, guys. But I just get that you ver you love very, very deeply and very, very intensely. And you are extremely perspect uh, protective of those that you love. I feel like one of your spiritual gifts is you are a great family member to have other people might not appreciate it but you are a spectacular friend because you ride or die pal one like if you love somebody it is till death do you part if you truly care about somebody you are one of the biggest 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 you're one of the biggest champions for other people and i do feel like another one of your spiritual gifts with this elephant represented here i feel like you have such a presence and an aura about you people are magnetized by you and some people will see you as cocky and arrogant, but if people are able to break down your walls, they will just see how soft you are. I do feel like one of your other spiritual gifts here with the hangman is you're able to shift people's perspective. I'm particularly being drawn to um, this this delta energy, which is change. And in that Neptune, so you're able to clear people's fogs. I feel like you may not be like a traditional tarot reader or you might not have physical tools, but I do see that you get downloads and insights and you're able to share it with people. You're able to give people really good information that they can take with them. But I do feel like one of your gifts is just the home that you're able to create for yourself. People feel very comfortable in your energy. 
which is a gift. You know, people feel super comfortable around you. They want to share. They want to have a good time. You are just really positive vibes. Even if you don't feel that way, sometimes you just are always the life of the party. That's what I heard. The party don't start till I walk in. Like you are certainly the life of the party, pal, too. Um, and people need that, you know. Um, I feel like I've been getting a lot of past life's energies too. So I feel like in past life, you were like a great hostess or you ran clubs or something, speakeasies, um, or just, you know, there's always been clubs. Of course, I'm thinking in the modern history, but even fat, even further back than that, you could have owned <laughs> brothels. <laughs> you just owned places that were good times. Um, and so I do feel like you also, one of your spiritual gifts, you're able to build and create a legacy and probably a, a good business person. If you've had financial issues in the past, it's because you haven't had enough to like save but you actually be really good at saving so that is a gift um so we got the seven of cups three of wands six of swords the ten of swords i do feel like another spiritual gift is you're able to get people out of sticky situations um like i said i just feel like you would be the type to take in foster kids or take in your brothers children for some reason for some of you you might you might be doing that i just feel like you open up your home and your space to family in particular um and you are all are, are all about preserving that legacy um and that's why your ancestors are very close to you but there is something here wow the ace of swords the knowledge and the insights that you have and the thoughts you just get blessed with just random wisdom i feel like you probably pile two I'm not getting that you are like the type to, you might have a channel, you might start a spiritual channel, but I feel like you're more one-on-one, -on -one. like you're more so, if you're talking to somebody, you get some insight, you're like, hey, got this download. You might not even realize that you're channeling, but um, you're able to just give people profound clarity with your words of advice. And you're also a really good per you're also a really good time. You make people smile. You know how to lighten the mood. Um, which is definitely a, a, a huge gift pile too, all right? So now we're going to see how would they benefit you. So how would these gifts benefit you? Oh, excuse me, the five of pentacles. Yeah, I feel like you know isolation um, or you've grown up. Yeah, the chariot. You've been able to grow up in isolation and you want people to, I'm going to, these some of the same cards are popping out. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a deeper shovel. Not saying that they don't resonate. And again, if they're meant to come out, they will pop out again. But I just feel like you're able to take people out of uncomfortable situations. And again, even with that King of Swords, not didn't, don't know if you saw him poke out, but it just goes again with the Ace of Swords for that insight and clarity and the communication and advice that you're able to give. One of your spiritual gifts is the advice and the words that you share. I'm so serious. Um, you know, and, and it's funny because... Pile one was like more the traditional like crazy kind of spiritual gifts or like they can talk to dead people. So if you feel like you can talk to dead people, then pick, click pile one. But this one is a more subtle spiritual gift. I feel like your words are really your gift. What's that? Oh, there's a Kendrick Lamar line. Oh, and it's this one gonna feel like laughing to the bank. Like, ah, uh -huh. um, that's a great song. But what is the line? Oh, hopefully it comes to me. Oh yeah, everything I say, everything I touch is a gold mine. Everything I say is from an angel. And I do feel like you, everything that you say is from an angel. Please look up that song. It's God, G-O-D, period, from um, Kendrick, by Kendrick Lamar. Um, that's one of my favorite songs. But I just feel like you have, everything that you say is from an angel. And sometimes it's gotten you into trouble, I'm sure. But it doesn't seem as spooky, right? It's not like a spooky gift. It, it can be simple. You know, your spiritual gifts can be extremely simple. Not everybody has the insight or wisdom and downloads to give some good ass advice. Like if people pile to, if somebody comes to you and asks you for advice, you're really going to give it to them. You're really going to tell them, them how to move forward. And I feel like it's probably been underappreciated. But that is your gift. <laughs> wow. So we got the seven of pentacles here. The high priestess. So how would this benefit you? How does your gift benefit you? The four of pentacles and, oh, the fool. 
So, and you know what also, I'm also hearing, yeah, the angels, <laughs> your angels, your spiritual guides are like, boom, they're on you. You, you can walk into a room and just know, Queen of Wands at the bottom of the deck, you can walk into a room and just know, like, I feel the vibes, I feel the energy, I know if I need to stay or if I need to go. Some people with that Queen of Wands, I really do feel like pal too, it's crazy because some people see you and think that you are just the sweetest thing on the planet and that you are the nicest and you would literally take their shirt off their back. Others of you, other people think that you are just hot, nose in the air, uh, real rude, you know, that bitch. Like they really just, they probably, I, uh, there could be a lot of gossip surrounding you, but it stems from jealousy. But I'm also hearing that your guides are very clear. Your thoughts, your discernment has gotten you out of crazy situations just because your angels be like, mm -mm, y'all need to be here. <laughs> y'all need to be here, sis, bro. You need to pack it up and go on it. You're like, I sure do. And so you will hightail your ass out of that. Those flashes and thoughts that you get is such a spiritual gift you don't have to you're not the type of person who has to burn themselves in order to know because your angels will be like don't talk don't touch that it feels like sometimes they'll be like uh you'll hear like a voice from behind you that'll be like don't do that be careful don't do that um so that's really interesting with that with that balance but i feel like you have access to a lot deeper knowledge. And I do see with the Seven of Pentacles, it might not, you might not have realized how on point your intuition is because it hasn't necessarily been, because of course you're young. And so you would hear things, you'd be like, nah. So probably in the past, you've had some issues with second guessing yourself. But the more mature that you get, the more you realize, like, no, you knew the first time, the second time, the third time, you always know what's up. Your your discernment is killer about people's situations, advice. Like if anybody, if you talk to some a stranger on the street and they just sat down and started telling you their life story, you would listen to them and you would be able to tell them exactly what needed to, <laughs> what needed to happen in order for them to be better off you know um and as far as it has how it benefits you i just feel like it's when you listen to that you are able to be so free and explore uh when you don't listen to yourself you feel trapped so I do see this push-pull relationship with your spiritual gift because it is so subtle, but it's very powerful. Um it's extremely powerful. So I really do feel like you um your intuition is able to direct you in the right way when you p stop and listen to it. Again, there's so much Aries and Aquarius energy. So you could be quite stubborn and that could be why you fought yourself. But I think that the more that you've embraced your your gifts, um, the less BS that you genuinely have to go through. <laughs> so that's how it benefits you. You really avoid issues, people, places, things. Um, because of your intuition and just your divine knowledge, the King of Wands. So, and I also hear, yeah, and that's where kind of like, again, that Leo energy, you, you, it benefits you because the more mature that you've gotten, no matter how old you are, um, you're so confident in yourself because you know, not the sun coming out twice after we mentioned Leo. So you just know <laughs> what to do. And the Queen of Bottoms still at the bottom of the deck, the Queen of Wands. So... You genuinely are in the process of of balancing the the masculine, which is just being so aggressive and so abrasive, and the feminine, which is also aggressive. <laughs> but you actually are in balance between your divine feminine and masculine energies when you listen to yourself because your angels are on point when they tell you what's going on. You get chills, you get shivers, you get insights, you get downloads at a rapid at a rapid pace. So I really do think that if you are not, if you don't listen to your your first mind then you're missing out i feel like you do with all this fire energy you really fly by the seam of your passions you get an idea and you go with it which is super ad admirable in my humble opinion um <laughs> but yeah so that's what i'm getting but again you shine it benefits you because you also shine you stand out you radiate i feel like your skin glows because you're just in tune you don't put up with bs you do not put up with bs it's it's that is your spiritual gift <laughs> i love it yeah this is definitely a uh, more straightforward than the first group but i love it this is a much needed energy and yeah pal too I, I come to you for advice for sure <laughs> I just feel like your wisdom that you, you just have access to, again, just deeper knowledge and deeper insights. And you're really good with helping people get through day to day. All right. So now we're moving on to how would your gifts benefit others? 
How do your spiritual gifts benefit others? And this is the Sun and Moon Tarot, in case you guys are interested. I think it's a very pretty deck. You know me, I'm always wishing that there's more color, and I'm gonna make my tarot decks, but that's my only critique. But this one, this deck does have color in it. All right, so how does it benefit others? Yeah, death and rebirth. You really be giving people good advice for free. <laughs> I mean, if you have been called to start, I just feel like you're more of a good energy. You're more of a people person. You could easily be a performer too. Excuse me. Let me let me take that back because the double Leo energy, you might be able to step out on stage. Um, some of you are going to be, if you're more of the Taurus energy, then no. But if you're the Leo energy, then I do think that you should um, think about... Um, sharing your wisdom out loud like you would be able to be one of those people on tiktok who's just all of a sudden like i'm not confident in myself like that to just get on tiktok and be like y'all here's my motivational thing for the day like my angels my guides and my relationship with my spirituality it doesn't work like that so i admire people who can just start talking and you're one of those people who can just pick up your phone and you will say something that'll help somebody while while away if you are more the leo if you fit into more of that taurus and you're just you would definitely be like the matriarch patriarch of the family everybody would go to you for advice everybody would come and ask you for advice your friend you are the first person that they call um because you're able to really fire people up i think with all this fire energy and, and you you know what i mean i'm hearing be careful pile too because um because you don't want to give your fire out. I feel like you've probably experienced that in the past. So you have to be protective of your energy. I, thank you for clicking on this reading. Because that is why you need to know that your energy, your fire, that passion, your advice is a gift. So you cannot spread that to everybody. You think that's just who you are because it is who you are. You were born like that. But listen, not everybody has that. They have to call you for a reason. They don't have the thoughts that you have. I'm hearing for you, stuff is no brainer. So you're like, what do you, why are we even having this conversation? Like it's so obviously B, you know? the answer is so obviously B what what are we even talking about but people don't have that knowledge people don't have that access so please protect yourself uh particularly if you're more on the like friendly level you know and you're not charging people uh because you could get burnt out but you really do fire people back up and make them feel like they can rise again I do get that you could be a great motivational speaker um that too the nine of pinnacles so how do you benefit others? Yeah, I really feel like you know how to build people up and just tying it back to that home because you have such a welcoming home and you're able to take everybody in. You're like everybody's <laughs> mom, dad, grandma. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> you just feel like you maybe you're a person who's going to have like a whole lot of God children I'm hearing too, or, you know, you have a whole lot of nieces and nephews. <laughs> um, and you'll be closer to the nieces and nephews than you are to, you know, than they are to their parents. They'll come to you and ask you for stability. Uh, but I just feel like, yeah, you just have a very open home. I do want to say with I'm getting kids are very drawn to you. So you might not consider yourself a person who likes kids, uh, but kids are always just fascinated with you. <laughs> They'll probably like stare at you. You're like, what are you looking at, kid? <laughs> King of Swords, the Ace of Pentacles, beautiful. How do you benefit others? You give people clear directions in a in a good start. Um, you can inspire people to go after their dreams or just inspire people to not be defeated by their circumstances. The Five of Wands. You really encourage people to stand on their own two feet. And even and it's just your presence. Again, like if you through a house party, somebody would almost always come up to you and be like, man, I just admire you so much. Like you inspire me so much. Um, I, how did you do it? How did you overcome these obstacles? And I feel like you, again, like I said earlier, you don't wear your heart on your sleeve. You know, people know you as that fiery energy. Or, and if you're the Taurus, they know you as that cool energy. People don't know what you go through. They have no idea what's happening on your inner turmoil. So then when you end up telling them, that you overcame it and all the other stuff, your natural sunny disposition, people are really inspired by you, you know? And and again, it's a gift that you don't spread your your misery germs over everybody. <laughs> you know, you, you kind of stick to yourself and you teach people that they can do it too. For some of you, if you're a... Are, um, or men or women, I was going to say men, I was going to say woman, but you know what? Let me try to keep it as open as possible. 
Some of you guys are really good at business and so you're good at giving financial advice. And so at some point you could end up motivating or encouraging people to start their own business. Um, you would be a really good financial adv advisor. Oh my gosh, not abundance at the bottom of the deck, just confirming not the three of cups and also just that group energy. You really are, are great um, amongst other people. Is really where you shine. And that is a gift. That's a gift. You're able to clear people's mind and give them good, clear, solid advice. And then, yeah, temperance. So balance, again. So how does your gift help others? Any last cards for how does Pal 2's gift help others? Ooh, excuse me, the seven of wands. Yeah, you just, you're so, the six of swords. You're so inspiring for people to do stuff. Oh, not failure, the seven of pinnacles. <laughs> this is my first time seeing all these cards in this deck. Um, so that's hilarious. Um, but I just really get that you're able to encourage people. And it's funny because we have art and science here. So they, you know, normally they are apart, but I feel like you, this is more of a personal message to you, but I feel like you do something that it's both. So you do something that is creative, but it requires science behind it. And maybe you're bridging that gap, but your biggest gift that you can help other people with, right? So that was for some of you, take it or leave it. Um, but I do feel, and I'm oh, sorry, I'm going back to that, but like, it could be like architecture where it's, it's math based, but you are creating a building out of nothing. Like that is such a creative process to be in the buildings. <laughs> That is like one of those science meets art. Um, it doesn't have to be that extreme, but it would be something like that. But your biggest gift and how you help other people is to really find their own voice and champion for themselves and to overcome their situations and leave situations. You really are um, a beacon of light and hope. And again, that's either on a one-on-one -on -one scale with people who come up to you at your little parties or whatever and your friends and family, or it could be on like a, a grander scale where you are... Um, somebody who is a self-help person and I feel like you're genuine, you know, and, and I say that too, you know, <laughs> I love my little tribe, you know, there's not a whole bunch of us here. Um, and that's okay because I feel like I'm really speaking to genuine people who are genuinely operating from the, as, as they choose to be from their highest octave and highest vibration. So when I say that you're a self-help person, you are not Derek Jackson. You actually mean it. You live it. You've overcome, especially with this Phoenix energy, that death Scorpio energy, you actually have transformed your situation. So when you speak to people and you give insights literally that just pop pour into your head people listen because you mean it you know and that's absolutely gorgeous so do not hesitate do not think that you're putting on a show or that you're trying to play people or con people you genuinely mean what you're saying you're coming from a very authentic place specifically if you've lived it and you've been through the trial and fire and you've had to rise above it people need to hear that people need to hear your voice because you are so strong and you are able to encourage and inspire i'm inspired just doing your reading you know what i'm saying so that's awesome all right so now we are going to see how to strengthen your gifts and then we're using the Universal Tarot of Marseille for this one. All right. So how to strengthen your gifts. Oh, the hermit. That's so funny. You have to seek it out. <laughs> you. Okay. So because you're such a light person and you enjoy people and you enjoy company, like I said, you have to take time for yourself. You have to disconnect because your personality is your gift. <laughs> the three of wands, you know, your personality is your gift. <laughs> Who you are, your essence of being, that's your spiritual gift. The fact that you were born, not me gassing a Leo, not me gassing a Taurus. <laughs> and if you're not those signs, then you might have them prominent in your chart. But I just feel like regardless, you know, you know what it, you know, you know what it is. You know, I'm joking. Um, and that could, you can have second house placements or fifth house placements if you don't actually have those signs. That works too. Um, what is this? Is this the four of cups? Yeah, I feel like in order to strengthen your gifts, you really have to, um, you might have been already forced into this period of isolation, but if you really want to, you have to learn to trust yourself and hear what that voice sounds like, if that makes sense, so you can decipher it. How do I word that better? Um, everybody's energy communicates with them differently. You have to start picking, you have to take time out to realize the patterns in the universe so you know when you're being spoken to. So on a small level, 
For instance, in one of my relationships, I started to notice that the number 33 follows me around. So anytime I see 33, now I know that that's communicating about that specific relationship. So you have to, but I had to pick up on the pattern. Like, why do I keep seeing 33? And I had to be like, okay, so when I see 33, this is normally what I'm thinking of. Oh, okay. So when I see 33, then that means X. But that only comes with sitting in your sitting in your own energy. Of course, I had all of COVID to do that. And I, and like I was telling one of my one of my girls earlier, who I would not be surprised picked this pile to be honest. Um, but I was just like, I've gotten a lot better at reading. You can watch my older videos and they're great. You know, of course they're great. I did them, period. I'm totally kidding. But I have learned so much more since those earlier videos. And I'm so much I'm com comfortable and it's because I took a break. You know, I was the worst poster <laughs> on the planet, but it's because I was doing this hermit energy. So you got to take that time out for yourself so you can get clear judgment on how to move forward with your gifts. But be patient with yourself. And then we have the Queen of Cups, beautiful. So I do feel like some of you guys actually, you're hearing that your presence is a gift. <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh my gosh, all the God complex people that we have down there. <laughs> But I am hearing that your presence itself is a gift. So you have to preserve your presence. That is how you strengthen your gift. When it's time for you to put that empathy on hold that you give so generously. Like I said, this is just who you are. So you have to be aware of that and tune out when it's time for you to tune out and go into that Herman mode and then be able to give. I do feel like some of you also in order to strengthen your gifts, you need to travel um, with the three of wands here there you also need to expand your experiences and I feel like as you expand your experiences you're also unlocking memories from past lives and so on and so forth so that's really fascinating um pile two ah the ace of pentacles how to strengthen your gift yeah so in order for you to strengthen your gifts you have to be still so then you can recharge and then go back out into that energy. <laughs> the hangman. <laughs> if you read cards, then am I making this up? You know, please confirm in the comment section. Um, but I feel like that will be your best bet is to just be, be still, focus in. And then again, get your coin up with the Ace of Pentacles. Because like I said, to go back to the original part of this reading, one of your gifts is you're very welcoming and loving and you have an open home and you're very abundant. So you have to take care of yourself first. You have to build your abundance first. So then you can be the person that needs to share. You have to take it by steps. I do. I hope that this reading pal to clarifies for you just how gifted you are and you are enough. You don't need pixie dust and fairies and, and all this other stuff to kind of help you you're a magical being in and of yourself and that's no shade to any of the people who use pixie dust you know what i'm saying <laughs> i'm one of them people but like you are enough and so that being said if you're trying to do and be all of this right now and this isn't right this coin is not right then take a pause get your coin right and then you'll be able to do this work because you have to overcome oh woo spirit thank you you have to overcome and you have to get out of your situation so then you can be that inspiration and people can listen to your advice really because you did it. You're living proof. You're a living testament of how to live life, how to combine spirituality, how to follow your intuition, how to follow your guts. So you have to defy those odds, okay? And the three of wands here, I just imagine travel. You are a person who absolutely has to travel um, different places at different times. Strong Sagittarius energy for some of you guys. Oh God, oh gosh, how did I miss Sagittarius? Some of you guys could definitely be Sagittarius or have ninth house placements. Uh, very strong. Oh, look at that beautiful Ace of Cups at the bottom of the deck. So I just feel like you have to give yourself some love. And then when you fill up your own cup, then you will continue to spread love and joy because I you wanna share. I do imagine that. But at this point with this reading, I don't know if you fully are aware of just how much your mouth, your mind, your thoughts are a direct download from spirit and people are not gifted with that same level of discernment, okay? So that is what I got for you so far, pal too. Woo, what a ride, all right? So of course we are going to move into the oracles, but I just want to take this moment to say thank you so much for your continued support. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Drop a comment below. If you'd like to book a personal reading with me, that information is in the description box below. And I am gonna pull out my little cash app card, guys. I appreciate you so much. And this is if you are 
like if you would like to and are able to donate you are under no obligation guys but this is if you just like to give a little extra loving you know what i'm saying a little pinnacle energy to your girl that's fine <laughs> Um, we have um, Cash App, so the dollar sign, capital A, capital B, lowercase ev224. If PayPal is more up your speed, you can, um, that information is in the description box. Guys, sorry, I lost my train of thought, but I appreciate you. Prayers mean so much too. If that's all you can give, I appreciate every bit of positive energy and vibes that you send my way. But thank you so much if you've already donated. I've tried to send emails from the PayPal and it's been bouncing back. So if you have not received an email from me and you've donated, I will go ahead. I'm trying to figure that out. I'm not forgotten or not have uh, forsaken you. But thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Words cannot describe. All right. So let's move into <laughs> your animal cards. Um, it's so funny. Before we even start, I just want to go ahead and say I picked up this and then we got the Leo card. So hit pause and you can read that. <laughs> so definitely strong Leo energy and higher calling. Um, you're honestly meant to be a royalty and a clean. You, your life, uh, your spiritual gift is you're here to like lead by example. The way you live your life is your spiritual gift, if that makes sense. Um, so let's go ahead. We already had three cards pop out, so I'm going to take them. Um, oh, wow. We got the bison abundance. So I'm not going to read these out to you, but just hit pause and read that. Um, bison abundance. So again, just that pinnacle energy. You are so abundant and you share. You're very given. Wow. Fox clever. That's beautiful. So you're very smart. Again, foxes are witty. They're sly. You, you know how to get out of a pickle. You know how to save people out of their situations. You know how to provide spaces for people in order for them to feel love and abundance. Again, you even got puffin partnership. So all these, and look at this big family, the buffalo. Everybody loves a water buffalo. Yours is fast, but mine is slow. Shout out to Veggie Tales. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> you got all this partnership. So I do think that you're just able to bring people together. And I do feel like with that energy here too, I feel like you might be good at matchmaking. Like you have been able to bring people together. That's one of your sly things. <laughs> You're really good at um, being able to matchmake. Hey, some of you guys who are good enough to make a business out of it. That's really specific. Maybe one or two of you, but you could make a business out of matchmaking actually. Um, yeah. So again, hit pause or go back, scrub through so you can see. And then, of course, I'm going to end on those crystals. So these are crystals that you can incorporate into your lifestyle that will help you. Um, I would read I would read up and Google these crystals after. Oh, oh, my God. OK, so we're going to take the two that flipped over. OK, just kidding. That would be never mind. They're like a thousand that flipped over. That's cool. So just three cards, spirit. OK. Ha <laughs> ha. So we got um, Ascendant Master El Moria and Blue, Sa Blue Star Sapphire Higher Will. So you can look up um, the Ascendant Master and the Crystal. And then, wow, this fire. Ascending Master Lei Zhao and Zensite. I li Let me tell you, Descending Power. So it's funny because you have... Um, you have higher and descending. So you really know how to meet in the middle. Like I said, you know how to take people's higher wills and make it into power that's tangible uh, for other people. So that's really absolutely gorgeous. Let's see what we have at the bottom of the deck. Yeah. Archangel Gabriel and Turquoise. Um, safe to be seen. So you are absolutely safe to share your gifts and your talents with other people. Particularly if you've been itching to like start a channel or some sort Um Spirit is definitely supporting you in that to go ahead and, and start sharing your knowledge, particularly if you've seen the other side of the storm. If you're still in the midst of the storm, then um, finish the storm first. And then when you're done, <laughs> start telling people how to overcome the obstacles that you felt like you had to. And again, you just provide your good company. People love being in your company. Um, and you really know how to build people up. So that's absolutely gorgeous. So that is really what I got for you, pile number two. Um, thank you so much for joining me. This was a, a long reading, so I hope that it made sense and I hope that it helped, but you should know that you are absolutely a, a light and a gift to other people. And if you've ever felt otherwise, they lied, okay? 
<laughs> that's what I got. So guys, thank you again. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you guys again for participating in that poll. A new one will be coming up shortly. So um, that's what we got. Wow, and it's so funny ending here on the Ace of Swords. And it was communication that was your gift. So, and just your divine insight and knowledge. So that's beautiful. Alrighty, now we're moving on to pile number three. Who? Where's my other? Sorry, guys. I got to look at my phone. Um. Huh. Um. Sorry, guys. Well, I guess nobody's watching this, but give me two seconds. I need to send a text message. Okay, sorry. Boo, 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 boo. Um, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, let's 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 move on. So here we are. Where's the last card? What did I do with it? Did I put them both back? Um, it schooled me. <laughs> I just literally lost the third card. Wow. What happened? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Found it. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woo. So if you're a person who just turns this video on and watches it, you you were in for a treat. <laughs> all right. It's always the behind the scenes where all the action happens. Am I right? Okay. So let's retune in. Okay. Pile number three. Okay. Hello. Welcome to Cosmastrology. I am AD and this is if you picked pile number three, the Ace of Cups. Today we are going to be looking into what are your spiritual gifts. Okay. So the questions we will be asking is what are your spiritual gifts? How do they benefit you? How would they benefit others and how to strengthen your gifts? And of course, we're going to end on a couple Oracle cards guys. So thank you so much for joining me. Let's get into it. And thank you for participating in the polls. If you did. So this was second place. I'm going to be posting another poll pretty soon. So be ready for that. So we can get our order for next week. That helps me so much guys. I, I think too much. I really be thinking too much. So I just need to know what, what's on the agenda. So thank you so much for participating in those polls. Okay, so let's look into it. So first we're starting on what are your spiritual gifts? I do want to say that there's astrology signs on these cards. So these are the ast astrology placements I'm going to be using. Uh, please keep in mind that I do subscribe to Vedic. So my placements might be different, but the energy should be about the same. All right, so we're starting off here with the Three of Pentacles, Mars and Virgo. I just heard you, one of your spiritual gifts is you know how to get shiz done. Um, you really know how to get shiz done. <laughs> oh, not the Empress. <laughs> I was like, you do not play. You are so strong. Uh, pile number three. Um, and the four of wands represented here. So I really do see pile number three. You are a pillar of strength and you're a great leader because the three of pentacles does represent, you know, collaboration and the four of wands is those two. It's normally those two and two things with the people in the middle. So I do feel like you're surrounded by people. But one of your spiritual gifts is not only are you able to bring people together, you also stand out amongst the crowd. Um Yeah, the knight of pentacles. But I feel like you are very work and, and goal oriented. Um, I just heard the Midas touch. So what you touch turns to gold. Uh, pile number three, that is a spiritual gift. Uh, here we have Libra represented. This is Aries energy for me. Um, we also have Venus and Aries. <laughs> you could be an Aries moon specifically. And then we got, um, here we have Leo and Virgo. with the knight of Pentacles. So let's keep, let's keep at it. Wow. The chariot, the chariot card has made, um, a lot of has made an appearance very heavily in pile one too. <laughs> the foolish man. So that's funny. So the cancer and <laughs> not the cancer, but cancer energy here <laughs> and uh, the full Aries, more Aries energy backing that up. So you're definitely fiery. I feel like you uh, pile 
three. Some people will call you like bullheaded or you just kind of go towards it. That's one of your gifts. You're very strong. You're just going to do it. You don't really take no for an answer. Oh, <laughs> the devil. That's interesting. Capricorn energy coming through. Um, So there is like earth fire here. <laughs> So earth, fire mix, the moon, again, more Cancerian energy, Pisces also. Ooh, wow. Major Arcana straight down the middle. Um, ooh, okay. And we had a couple more cards fly out. So the queen of swords and we have the six of cups represented here. Okay. So let's look into it. I'm going to put this to the side and then we're going to see how that factors into everything. Um, let me look. Let me try to straighten these out a little bit. Okay, so let's tune in. What are Pile Three's spiritual gifts? Um, I feel with the Knight of Pentacles to the Empress, you are very patient. That is one of your gifts. Now, that being said, I feel like you are patient with life, but you're probably impatient on like day to day things. And again, that could be that I I am an Aries moon, so. <laughs> I relate that, you know, some people are just like, wow, I can talk to anybody. I can, when it comes to like little kids, I can be very patient with kids, but I would never be a teacher because that would drive me nuts on a day to day. You see what I'm saying? So I feel like you're patient with life. You're patient with certain things. You're patient with healing energy, a very maternal energy with this cancer here. Uh, but, and you're very abundant, but at the same time on a day to day level, <laughs> you can be a little uh, rambunctious, but I think that that's because you're passionate, especially with this Venus and Aries. You're a very passionate type person. Again, you love aggressively. I mentioned that in Pile Two, also. So you could have been drawn to both. Uh, but I feel like you're you just love very very aggressively. You're masculine about your femininity, and that's a gift about it. Because even though you're a woman, you know you <laughs> you love it when I move you. You believe God is a woman. <laughs> you know, like you really embody that kind of like goddess type energy with the Empress card coming out here. Um, and then daughter of the mighty one. That's so interesting. So I just feel like you come from a long line and a lineage of very strong uh, people. And so you kind of carry on this this energy and you come from a very strong uh, matriarch for a lot of you, whether you're a, a feminine or masculine. But I also get that your line would be like the Amazonian women, kind of from Wonder Woman, where you come from women who are just as strong as men. They're, they're equally as respected as men. You do not see that as a um, quote unquote, what is it? You do not see your femininity as a weakness and the eye of a patriarchy. And if you are a masculine, if you are a man, I just really get that you embody feminine energy in a, in a dominant way. It does not have to mean anything about your orientation one way or another, but I feel like you are able to just own a room without much speaking. Whether you're a masculine or a feminine, your presence is just present. And again, whatever you, whatever you touch turns to gold. I feel like, again, you have a very strong work ethic. That is one of your spiritual gifts is you are able to see things through look at all this Capricorn energy um you are certainly able to see things through and get things started we got what is this Mars Saturn and Virgo um so you can be quite the perfectionist and I think that again anything you touch turns to gold because you're not going to accept anything less <laughs> Um, I also feel like one of your other spiritual gifts, now I'm looking at these outer corners, um, I feel like Pal 3, you're able to, to set people free from limiting beliefs about work and society itself. You are able to give people clarity and honest insight um, about Kind of like how the system operates. I feel like you are good at the system. It's it, You have a very interesting gift, Pile 3. Please let me know if this resonates. But you are able to play the system, but you're also aware that the system is a system and it doesn't play you. And you let people know that insight. So you will be the type to be like, I hate... Mm, what is it? It's like if you can't beat them, join them and then destroy them from the inside. <laughs> It's kind of your philosophy. You're like, okay, well, since you didn't let me in your club, I'm going to learn all of your little rules and I'm going to perfect myself. And then when I get into that little rules, I'm going to use those rules against you. So <laughs> that could be from past life energy. Some of you guys could be lawyers or just extremely analytical. I feel like nothing really gets past you. And again, you command a lot of energy. Could be maternal energy. So we got Sun and Scorpio. So you could have um, Leo or Scorpio placements. But I do feel like 
one thing with this Lord of Pleasure there and this Empress, another one of your spiritual gifts, and this didn't come up for anyone else, but I am getting like strong sexuality, sensuality too. Um, and you're able to use your words and communicate about things with the moon card that other people wouldn't want to communicate about. Ooh, you also have this power of unlocking yeah, you're very, oh, oh yeah, it does tie into it. Wow. So one of the spiritual gifts, pal three, is you are able to uncover really taboo things. You have very unorthodox ideas. Um, sometimes we have Libra and Virgo represented with the Queen of Swords, but I feel like you're able to uncover secret truths and you're able to talk about things that make other people very uncomfortable. Could be sex, could be addiction, could be um, I mean, what everything makes everybody uncomfortable nowadays. <laughs> so there's that. But I feel like you're able to talk and articulate things in a certain way. Again, I cannot get over how you're able to command a room and reign in a room with just your voice. Like you're the type of person to be like, hey, stop. And the world goes silent, you know? Um, you have a big voice. <laughs> it's kind of what I'm hearing. Um, so that's kind of what I got for you for what is your actual spiritual gift. I will say that, yeah, it's, it's the it's the power that you have. Again, it's your your essence, your being is your spiritual gift. Um, the knowledge and just your insight to to things that people wouldn't normally talk about. Um, it was interesting because Pal One was able to kind of communicate with with the dead people and mediumship, kind of what what more you would expect. But you, I don't know if you can. Some of you could be able to channel energies, but you'll be able to understand that people can do that, right? So you're like, hey, listen, that's not my forte, but I do know some people who can do that <laughs> you know so you just have a whole bunch of not occult knowledge and different things you could be a tarot reader an astrologer like myself um and just have access to things that people really don't want to talk about normally but you master them and you're really good and you literally you literally let it guide you through your life and so that is a very powerful spiritual gift that you have um from other from other people all right i'm at <laughs> for yourself <laughs> excuse me and you use it to help benefit other people but let's see how will this gift benefit you so now we're going to look into the cards um give me a second you're able to just get mess done like if you're on that project then it's fire <laughs> You know how Rihanna just blesses every track that she's on? Yes, I'm a Rihanna fan. And no, I don't care if you aren't, period. I don't give a freak, okay? You ain't gonna talk about my queen, all right, period. But you know how in every Rihanna song, like she just graces the track. Like once she's on it, it's fire. <laughs> Even if you didn't like the song at first, like she, if she's on it, she's an icon. I feel like you have that type of energy and whatever you do. And it could be in a work setting, in a more traditional work setting, or it can be in an artistic way with... um with the Pisces energy. I feel like both of you, you're really good at both. That's another spiritual gift is I feel like you can do business and art very well. And when you make your art, your business, <laughs> the Empress, <laughs> like, like I said, Queen Rihanna, right? Um, so yeah, I do think that your gift is also your divine intelligence and divine intuition is what I'm hearing. When you listen to the moon. Wow, that's so interesting. You really, Pile 3, need to tune in to the moon and to cycles. I feel like you could be, if you tune into your menstrual cycle and all the other stuff, you would really understand how femininity works. I've done that. I have an app. This is so funny, guys. Um, I have an app. It's called Ovia, O-V-I-A, and it tracks my ovulation. And I've been on it since I was like 18. And now <laughs> I'm not 18 anymore. I can say that. <laughs> a lady never reveals their age. But I, I know when I'm fertile like and, and it's crazy because now my cycle lines up with the moon cycles um or it, it, it had it's a little off now um and of course I'm a little off but <laughs> um it, so I realized that my cycle lines up with the moon cycle so sorry if that was TMI particularly if you're a man but I can better tune my energy I know when I'm full I know when I'm fertile I know why I'm sluggish I know what happens but I do feel like you're very much uh, with all this cancer and energy um, moon energy, you definitely go in and out, in and out, in and out. Your waves, your mood kind of fluctuates, which might not seem like a gift at times, but once you know that about yourself and you can follow your own personal rhythm with the universe, then you will feel more in tune. So that's specifically for some of you. Um, and if you don't have a cycle anymore, then, you know, scrap that. But I do feel like you definitely are heavily influenced. And if it doesn't have to be so, if you're a masculine, I feel like you can like taste it in the air. You're like, oh, it's a full moon. Oh, it's a new moon. <laughs> uh, I, I get this. So you really have to pay attention to the moon cycles and your moon cycle. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> Excuse me. 
So how would this gift benefit you? It helps you make decisions because <laughs> I think you you definitely follow your intuition or you follow signs. You are able to really read signs. That's another spiritual gift that I'm kind of hearing. It's like you hear numbers, you get synchronicities. Your guides are very close to you. And again, your your own guy, your 5D self is like one of your strongest guides. You build a really, not the moon again. <laughs> wow. This is so interesting. How does this benefit you? Oh, man, I was just about to say, yeah, the Nine of Swords. Um, this this really, wow, Queen of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. So, Pile 3, your gift helps you get through turmoil and, and unexpected BS. Excuse me. You're always able to reinvent yourself again. That that this uh, Phoenix card. I just feel like stuff has happened. You you've been at crossroads. Things have fallen apart. But you've always been able to use your intuition to make the best decision in order on how to move forward, even if it has stretched you out. So I feel like you actually have a really good command. Eventually, <laughs> after all the drama and the crying and the tears and the falling off, you know we we, we get it. Um, you have a really good command of your emotions. You're very strong. <laughs> You're extremely strong in your power and your nature. And again, in your femininity, if you are masculine who picked this, please let me know how this resonates with you uh, because you just have such a strong yin-yang energy. If you are masculine, you definitely work in the esoteric arts. You're definitely a reader and all the other stuff. So you, you work very high priestess energy um, is what I'm hearing. But this gift certainly helps you it benefits you when things go crazy. You have such a strong foundation in yourself that you don't sway. You're just like, okay, if something ended, then I see another opportunity. Spirit, what's the opportunity? Okay, I'm going to follow my intuition and, and go get it, you know? So I just feel like you're able to just, when you get hit with a... Um, with an obstacle, your spiritual gifts allow you to rebuild yourself, the sun card, and shine again. So from the tower, you are constant. Not, and I don't want to make it seem like your life has been hard, but I have imagined that you've had major ups and downs, especially with the two of pinnacles here, um, or you felt stuck at places. So when things have ended and left, oh my gosh, sorry, my dog, <laughs> she's sleeping. Um, so when things have ended and kind of come crumbling down, you've always taken that as an opportunity to turn it into a bright and sunny situation. When people wrote you out, Pile 3, I mean, people were like, oh, she's never going to recover from this. He's never going to recover from this. You end up coming back even bigger and better. <laughs> the Nine of Pentacles here, you really have learned how to stand on your own two feet. Um, it's interesting. We got the King and Queen of Pentacles down here too. So that could mean something to somebody. But strong Taurus and just sturdy energy here um, is how it benefits you. You really are self-sufficient is what I'm hearing too. Your gifts benefit you because you're self-sufficient sufficient, and you're also willing to put in work. You just have a very strong dominant kind of personality is what I'm hearing, Pal 3. And you don't play. You like to work. You like to have responsibilities and obligations. You execute them. And I mean... I mean, any man, any man could stand up against you. I'm sorry if you're a man watching this, but if you're a feminine watching this, you are a force to be reckoned with. You are absolutely, I've been referencing her a lot, but definitely like Cleopatra, you know what I'm saying? Like, or Nefertiti. Nefertiti is a great, Nefertiti is honestly a better example than, than Cleopatra um, to an extent because she was really running that damn country. In fact, Nefertiti is the best example. Now that I'm really thinking about it because she went ahead and pretended like she was a dude just in case I didn't talk to her right. She was like, I'll do the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? But so I, I really get this this energy where you can hold your own in a room full of strangers and people respect you absolutely, um, pile three. So you, you if you're specifically, if you're a feminine, one of your spiritual gifts you're, is whew, your, your strength, your power, um, just in general. Okay, so let's see. Um, how could your gift benefit others? But I feel like your strength has gotten you out of like crazy situations. You've overcome so much, Pile 3. And I'm hearing you're never down for long. You might be down. Listen, you will be down, but you will get back up. What is that Cardi B song? Get up 10. Definitely get up 10. Or for my masculines, um, I, I consider this the, the male version that came out first. Um, Dreams and Nightmares, Meek Mill. Definitely that energy. And again, that works for both of you, but definitely... And you're so graceful is what I'm hearing with it. With the Nine of Pentacles to the Ten of Wands, you don't let people, 
you don't you don't burden other people. You you carry a lot of weight. And you'll carry it by yourself. And I feel like it's most of the time because you're a leader. So it's just like the buck stops here. So that's crazy. All right. So now this is how would your gifts benefit others? So you got the Ten of Swords, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Four of Pentacles. Wow, that's so interesting. I'm going to keep pulling. Um, but we got Failure and Power. So with the Ten of Swords, I do think that you help people. You probably find people. This is so interesting. Not the Two of Cups. Wow. I feel like, Pal 3, you always find people in weird states of their life, <laughs> the universe, the world. You find people in the midst of, like, in the middle of a of difficult cycles, and you're able to help them um, regain their power is what I'm getting, Pal 3, um, with patience. So people who have experienced failure or are scared of an outcome, that's when you kind of appear and help them, help guide them. You definitely offer a friendship or a one-on-one -on -one experience with people um, but I feel like you may meet people when you, when they are like, don't know what's going on. <laughs> I feel kind of stuck. Let's see. And like I said, it, it feeds again back into what your spiritual gift is. You offer people, um, you go against society. You don't let people be boxed in with that devil energy by their circumstances. Woo. Sorry. And this is, I don't know if I said it, but this is the sun and moon tarot. If you're interested. Sorry. I don't know if I said that. Um, wow. The hair font and justice. That's beautiful. The queen of cups in the middle here. Um, we'll put that there. Um, no, we won't. <laughs> we'll put that there. <laughs> um, but you definitely are, are patient. Like I said, your patience really helps people kind of figure it, figure things out with the hair font. You are very strong and sturdy, right? And people could easily come to you for advice. We got Taurus energy represented here in that little white cow. Um, and again, I'm getting this motherly energy from you too. You're able to just nurture others. So people benefit from your gifts just by learning how to be patient and wait, you know, even wait in the sand, even when it feels like nothing's moving with the four of pentacles, they're able to recharge and gain power. Um, I do feel like you're able to provide love. Look at that. And that one and and that one and one feeling. Um, especially with the ruin. So I feel like Pile 3, you've attracted people who are, are going through things or who have recently just gone through like really traumatic things or in the midst of super traumatic things. And you're just able to there to be like, hey, I'm a friend. I'm gonna listen to you. I hope that you're well. And then I think that you probably send them on their way, the two of cups to the um queen of cups energy here and the justice so the balance card you really do bring balance and fairness that yin and yang um and so that's interesting because i do feel like there might be a yang energy i hate bringing in other people to your reading but remember we saw that the the king and the queen of pentacles and i'm being drawn to this yin and yang you are so yin with that feminine energy i do feel like there's a counterpart for the yang i'm not going to get into it any more than that pal three because this is your reading but i do feel like that there is a um a counterpart for you but you are so divinely feminine um and it really helps nurture and, and love people. Yeah, peace. The two of swords, the tower. Oh, man. You're able to kind of shatter people's expectations. Didn't we have the tower before? Yeah. So you are here, scorpionic energy. The prince of pentacles also here. Um, and you were just help, able to help people rebuild after lightning struck. Wow. The tower. Is that not the eye of Thoth? Or however you say that, Thoth? <laughs> sorry i'm butchering it but isn't that the egyptian symbol and we were talking about nefertiti so that's so phenomenal um now that's interesting because again and that'll be the balance so it's like you provide this one-on-one -on -one experience but yet you're very royalty and higher up so it'd be interesting to talk to nefertiti's like friends do you know what i'm saying or just people that interacted with nefertiti on a day-to-day -day basis because you're like that i feel like you're very giving even though you are like this political monster for some of you guys or this business person and you just get stuff done and you're a heavy worker when people have the experience of seeing you one-on-one -on -one, they can't help but feeling very loved and abundant and i feel like okay you definitely help people get through tough times um that's a really roundabout way of saying that <laughs> So I was like, that's the word, that's the sentence. But you really help people slow down and get through tough times. Like you provide this resting space or your energy provides this resting space to be like, hey, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to take it slow as you start moving through. Um, 
life with the Prince of Pentacles to the Two of Swords there. I don't know. I was getting very Knight of Pentacles card, Knight of Pentacles energy from that, but that's okay. So we got the Four of Wands um, completion. So you, I, that wheel is turning. You're able to turn people out of that fire. When people feel like they're burning up, that's when you kind of come out of nowhere and then help them and be like, hey, there's a different perspective. You can experience this a little bit differently. And they're like, really? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> the Nine of Swords. Okay, and one last card. But even if you were Rihanna, right? Like, let's go back to that Rihanna energy. <laughs> Not the Queen of Wands. This is literally my Rihanna card. That's so funny. Um, you would be able, if you were a creator or a musician or an artist of some sort, or even a tarot reader or just that, or on a grander scale, you would help people with your music and your art to overcome these situations. So it might not be on a direct one-on-one -on -one level. For some of you, it is. And for, of course, for some of you, it's both. You know, Rihanna has friends. <laughs> And she might be very giving. And, and I think that too, with this being the page of Pentacles, you might be able to help people with money. I feel like your abundance that you get the Empress, you're able to share it with other people. So you're also very generous and giving. So I do think that you will end up with quite a bit of money because you'll have enough money to give away. If, it, if your money benefits other people, then I'm assuming that your bag is full, sweetie. Okay. Um, but again, I am getting that you're just able to take charge and give people their light again, the princess of the Prince of Cups. So in this really magnificent way, you're also able to get people through tough situations through your art, through your words, through your poetry, through your YouTube channel, through your whatever, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just meet people when they're stuck and you're like, here's how you do it. And it's just, again, by being your glorious, marvelous self, like you don't even have to try. It's just who you are. You've been through enough. I can promise you that you've been through enough. You've overcome enough. And you're like, listen, sweetie, <laughs> it's going to be okay. I promise you it's going to be okay. Um, so that's really is how your gifts benefit other people. All right. And so we have your last question, how to strengthen your gifts. I'm um, just seeing, did this um, yeah, so how to strengthen your gifts, the full card. I am getting trust them first. I don't know why I'm hearing that. I'm hearing that in order to strengthen your gifts, you have to trust them first because they haven't led you astray. Like your strength, your power, the energy that you exude has not left you astray. So your spirit wants you to take a risk and embark on this journey and let it move you forward. Um, the knave of swords. So this is about communication, sharing your knowledge and wisdom, but also Following your little thoughts. Again, just trusting the five of pentacles um, to the ace of swords. <laughs> Letting, don't, with the five of pentacles to the ace of swords, I'm getting that you have to share and communicate your experiences, the six of pentacles. So that's the next card out, right? And six of pentacles literally represent sharing. So sharing your thoughts, sharing your experiences is what I'm hearing um, and trusting your gifts. So I do think that when you talk to people, it strengthens your power because it's one of those things where when you give information, the energetic feedback that you receive from said information really fills you up. Again, I can identify with that because I, and that's why I always say I love your comments because I'm talking here then you tell me what you know oh that resonated I'm like oh yay and that makes me feel more like an empress you know so it's that energetic exchange so I do feel like you have to share it and I and I will say this when I was freaking not posting and wasn't doing anything I was like well I don't know my purpose and then I got back to tarot and everyone's like hey you're great and I'm like oh thank you yeah that was it so you can't hide yourself away you know um, <laughs> you can't hide yourself away and maybe because you've overcome so much and I'm sure that you've had your own bouts of depression and you had your own bouts of trials and tribulations, you know, like I wasn't just sitting around for the past year or so doing nothing. Like I listen, I was going through it like everybody else, but I was also improving upon myself and my knowledge. And now I'm able to share and vocalize it. So I don't want to say that like you've wasted time in the meantime by not sharing it. But if you feel comfortable in yourself now, then it is time to, to get back on it. The Nave of Wands again. <laughs> and the ace of cups sharing your love so how do you strengthen your gifts you really just got to follow with it with like this childlike wander i feel like you might think too much and because you're such a strategist is what i'm hearing especially with those um earlier cards you're such a strategist pile three that sometimes you outthink yourself and you don't actually start um, but you got to learn to balance your intuition and your emotions in order to kind of take off with this name of wands energy. Um, again, balance, balance, balance is major for you because once you get into that point of balance, wow, the 10 of pentacles, 
then you again you're so abundant you're so sharing you're so giving and you really don't have to worry about a lot of day-to-day -day stuff um just because you're powerful you know you're super duper powerful so let me see is there any other information and then one i feel like there's one more how to strengthen your gifts so we got the seven of cups oh two so we got the two of wands the six of cups and the seven of cups so i'm hearing very specifically pile three you gotta follow your childhood dreams the queen of swords you gotta follow your intuition to follow it oh my gosh the moon card to the sun okay i'm done i'm, I'm done <laughs> but you saw it you know you it, spirit is encouraging you to follow kind of like that childhood dreams and pay attention closely to your dreams because they didn't they're not random your existence isn't random your experiences aren't random um and when you can start connecting those dots for yourself then you'll suddenly feel like you're moving from the shadow period into the light and so again it just has to do with balance strong femininity masculinity right so there is this <laughs> this juxtaposition of feminine masculine you're the feminine i do think that there's a masculine out there but for for most of you guys i just feel like you got to charge past what you want the ace of wands um and so you got three aces the ace of wands the ace of cups and the ace of swords <laughs> so the only thing you don't have is the ace of pentacles but all the other pinnacle energy you know what i'm saying so i just feel like you're extremely balanced and in order to strengthen your gifts you really have to take it from follow your intuition into the sun make your intuition your sunshine do you know what i'm saying like make your moon sign your sunshine and i do feel like a lot of you need to tune in to moon cycles if you don't already um you certainly <laughs> i live my life by the moon that's the second time I heard that song. <laughs> um, that's midnight. What song is that? Is that gonna... Turn Off the Lights by Nelly Furtado. <laughs> I was like, what's the name of the song? But I just really get this beautiful energy here of when you follow your own intuition and you just go for it. And again, that kind of Aries bullheaded way, that Taurus way where you're just like, all right, got the idea, go for it. And you think less, that strengthens your gifts because you really have a knack for divine intuition. <laughs> that provides divine intervention you get what i'm saying so that is what i got for you pile three as far as the tarot thank you so much for joining me um of course i'm going to end up on your uh, animal cards and your crystal cards and your oracles. But I just want to say thank you so much for continuing to join me. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Instagram. If you'd like a personal reading with me, you can book that in the description box below. Shoot me an email. And of course, I am going to bring out my cash card, guys. So this is if you find it in your heart and in your spirit to donate to me personally. I super appreciate it. Um, if not, just send me a prayer. I take that too. But a dollar, five dollars in prayers, it all adds up. And I really appreciate that. So this is Cash App. So dollar sign, capital A, capital B, lowercase E, V, 224. And then we also have PayPal. That link is in the description box below. But I thank you so much for even considering. And if you have donated in the past, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. But let's go ahead and move back into the reading so I can get y'all out of here. But thank you guys. I appreciate your support. Um, and again, just a like and just a subscription means the world to me. So let's get into it. So I'm not going to read these. I'm just going to show you the cards and then you can hit pause and read them yourself. Woo! I'm going to take this one. I'm going to take these two because they kind of stuck out. Um... Well, let's see. And that's so funny. The dolphin. So they're able to communicate at different frequencies than other. So maybe you, again, you're a channeler or you're able to, you have a different relationship with spirit, but I don't feel like yours is as like pile one, they could physically like either embody that spirit or they could really talk to dead people. I feel like you just get downloads and receive divine communication. Um, so we got dolphin play. So hit pause, read that. Um, and then we got <laughs> Snow Leopard Self-Reliance. This came out earlier, um, I think, in Power 1. So hit pause. You can read that. And then <laughs> Raccoon Inventor. That's so funny. So that pinnacle energy making a point again. So even though you're a spiritual person, you're also a business person. <laughs> Like, you're also a business person. You will not be broke in this lifetime. And if you are broke now, you will not be broke for long. <laughs> you're not going to die broke for sure. Um, so, again, that's a spiritual gift that you have is to really be able to make freaking money and be inventive. And like I said, use your gifts. And that was multiple cards, guys. That's why I didn't take it. But um, to use your gifts 
to make money and profit, to use your art. You're a really great business person, really great political strategist. Like I said, Nefertiti. So we're going to take this top one because <laughs> I saw it and I'm doing three. And these are just crystals that you can use to can continue to help strengthen you. So I would look up the crystal and look up the, the person. Oh, my gosh. So we're going to go here. And then I feel like there's one more card. <sighs> okay, there we go. Thank you. I was nervous. All right. So it does seem like we have 14 Angel um, Lahabil. La Oof, sorry. And then Black Tourmaline. So screenshot that, look that up. That's a very pretty card. Of course, I'm drawn to this. I love the colors in this card. Um, and then we have Ascendant Master, Serapis Bay, and Clear Calcite, Karmic Grace. Oh, I've never seen this card before, but I feel like, yeah, you've just racked up a shiz ton of great karma. I do feel like you've lived a lot of life, especially with that Empress card coming out. You've lived a lot of lives, lifetimes before. That's why you're such a healer. That's why you understand tragedy. That's why you understand what people go through and you're such a support system. Um, and then we got Archangel Ad Nicole, Ad, Ad Nikhil, mm, and Tiger's Eye. Tiger Spirit rises. So there goes that fire energy. Like I said, you're feminine, but you're really feisty and fiery. You do not let much get past you. So that is absolutely what what but that is absolutely what I got for you, Pile Three. Thank you again so much for joining me. Um, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Instagram. And, you know, hit me up for a personal reading. I really hope that this resonated. I hope that this puts you more in tune with your gifts and you got some tools from it. So please don't forget to let me know if this resonated. Guys, peace. Thank you. Until next time.